that. Jerry Krug, are you ready? I am. Like, hold on, Mike. I got to put myself on timer, you know, <laughs> after what happened last time. Well, you Let's know see. what? You can go a little little over. No, I don't want to. And, and if you could, at uh, 8.05, at least send me a note or nudge me. I I'm should not be going done to, by I'm, I'm not going to nudge you because, uh, you know, we've got time. But do do your best. And you're going to okay, do a thanks. great thing. You're going to do a great thing here. So wonderful. All right. Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Um, I finished up tax season last October 15th and I had to wait a couple of days, had some appointments and stuff to do. Decided I wanted to take a few days and do a little road trip down to Rich Mountain on the Kansas City Southern in uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas. So I headed out on October 18th, got as far as Springfield, Missouri, and then uh, finished the rest of the trip to Hevener after that. This is the Kansas City Southern logo I shot on a coal train at Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin uh, in 2003, but it's the only close-up I had of the logo. All right, so just, I know most of you know the territory, but you could just see Milwaukee's up right at the very top under top share. So I drove through Springfield and St. Louis to Springfield the first night, then uh, rail fan the area in the circle. We'll just see if you get a lay of the land. This is a map of the Kansas City Southern System. Here's a closer up of the area. The, the Kansas City Southern has a crew change at Hevener, Oklahoma. And the Rich Mountain Territory is south. You can follow my pointer uh, back into Arkansas to Acorn. Acorn is where the highway crosses the tracks. Uh, I consider the end of the territory to be meaner, really, but who's counting? All right, so on the first night out, there was some classic neon in, uh, in Springfield, Missouri, so I had to share this shot. This was that sign was actually put up before Holiday Inn was founded. So it was always, uh, always a joy seeing that. All right, so I got to Hebener, Oklahoma, and I'm just after noon on the second day, which was October 19th. From Springfield to Hebener is about four hours. All right, so this was sitting in the yard, one of the rare engines that's still in the gray scheme that preceded the current bell scheme. While I was getting towards Hebener, I could hear in my scanner them giving warrants to the Fort Smith job. The Fort Smith job was coming back from Fort Smith to Hebener. So they run a pair of GPs and run every day, I guess, picking up and dropping traffic in Fort Smith. All right. Then I decided to see if anything was on Rich Mountain at the time. So I drove from Hebener to Rich Mountain. This took about 45 minutes. There's this nice depot at Mina, Arkansas. It's not used as a depot, but it's in good shape and a lot of cars around it. So offices, I assume. Okay. So then I went back to Acorn about four miles north of Mina and waited and this baby came along. Uh, this particular engine train had 10 engines on it, but only the first three were running. The rest of them were, I'm told, being towed. They put uh, helpers coming south at Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, that'd be Kansas. And then they run helpers on these items, on these trains all the way to a siding south of Mina where they're taken off. So once or twice a week, the, the northbound hauls all these uh, cars, all these engines back north. Uh, going towards me, I had spotted a little spot in the uh, in the gap in the trees, so I came back here and sat and caught that uh, northbound at this spot. I was pulled over with flashers on, and uh, one of these things you do when you rail fan, some good old boys in a pickup truck pulled in behind me, and I thought, are they going to rob me, or what's up? And uh, they just stopped to inquire whether I was in distress. And I assured them I wasn't, and that I was there to shoot a train, and after they got done rolling their eyes and muttering, they fortunately left me alone. Here I thought my trip was about to end before it got started. All right, this train is moving moving west now. Uh, this is the control point for the south end of Rich Mountain siding. There are two sidings between Hevener and the uh, and Mina. This uh, Rich Mountain is 9,000 feet, and a little farther to the west is Page, which is over 12,000 feet. So I assume that they stack their trains to fit in these sightings. Here's a longer longer profile view of that same train. 
I don't like the Norfolk Southern unit second, but what are you going to do? I decided for some unknown reason to try a sepia shot. Uh, probably wasn't a good idea, but that's what it looked like. Uh, saw these mileposts from time to time on the uh, Kansas City Southern, which reminded me that the Chicago Great Western also used these mileposts. And uh, I believe that the Ramos family was involved in both railroads. So whether that predates them or was because of them, I don't know. All right, so now I've arrived back in uh, Kibener to find the southbound by the yard office. So you check out my notes here. This is a southbound coal train. I saw several coal trains over the, the two, two days I was there. Here's that train with all the units on it again, pulling into the fuel rack. They have mainline fuel racks. They have double tracks at the north end of the yard. Uh, there's a road that splits this area. So northbound's fuel up on the south side of the road and vice versa. It got to be a little confusing when I was looking through my shots. All right, Southern Bell is a restaurant, which I patronize not this night, but the next night. And they're putting in some new condos in Hebener, as you can see. And this is, I'm sure, a, a prototype or the model. It looks like nice living to me. And this is a picture of the yard office where I guess it all happens. It was a significant size lot. I suspect that there are a lot of crews change here and live in the area. All right, that's the end of the afternoon of the first day. The second day, I spent the entire day in the area. So right at sunrise, this northbound grain train pulled in. Um, you can see there's a fair amount of daylight, but the town is shielded by high hills to the east of the town. So, so there's a lot of daylight, but no direct sun until about 8.30. The trailing unit on this train was a, a gray unit. I noticed that the engines are numbered only five apart. So I'm going to guess that the second one and the first one were bought at the same time. Who knows? All right. All right. So after that northbound cleared, the southbound was sitting at the yard office. This is a grain train. All right. All right. So. Now I decided to go up on Rich Mountain to see if anything was coming the other direction. And I heard the scanner chatter and I found that I was catching up to a train. So uh, it takes almost two hours for trains, it seems at normal speeds to go the 40 or 45 miles from Hebener to get over the top and I'm back on the flat land. So I had trouble catching this up and followed it for a little while. Uh, Highway 59, 270 runs right next to the to a lot of the track here. So other than the fact that there's some some growth that maybe could use some trimming, why it's an easy chase and a fun chase. I was hoping to catch fall colors, but you could see I was a couple of weeks early. Just following this baby to the west, to the east. All right. There's a road crossing at the end of the the elevation called at a little town called Acorn. So I was glad to get this shot and get a, a full length and dose of KCS engines. I uh, decided since the light was pretty good that maybe I'd try to see if I could get a better lit view of it further south. So I went south to a little town called Hatfield and waited about 15 minutes. And this is my last shot of this train, but I think the best shot of this train. Okay, so now it's time to head back towards Hebener and see what to catch. And as I, there was nothing on the mountain at that moment, but as I got to Hebener, I could hear the dispatchers talking to a, a northbound that had departed. So I, looking at the map, I thought maybe I could beat it to Spyro, although trains run 30 to 40 miles per hour here, so can't take it for granted. But I managed to get to the spot about two minutes before the train did. So just grabbed it. All right, I noticed going down to get that shot that I crossed over some tracks. So going back, I had a little time. So I stopped and looked and uh, saw that the tracks dead ended at the KCS uh, north south line and obviously uh, abandoned beyond that. So I finally figured out that this was the old Rock Island Choctaw route. And uh, 
after the Rock Island went out of business, uh, the Choctaw route was purchased in a few pieces, but not as a through route. So this track got abandoned. So the KCS uh, interchanges was a short line here. You can see I have a, a Rock Island timetable and it mentions the KCS crossing, although it didn't put the uh, mile post in it. How Oklahoma is uh, immediately in the area. And so on the other side of the bridge, looking the opposite direction, which would be west, you can see some tracks. When I got back, uh, another rail fan told me that the short line often stages an engine in this town, but I didn't know that and didn't take the time to go look. So a little bit of history there. All right, now I'm back in Hebener, and here's a, a southbound loaded coal train. Saw several coal trains during this trip, and apparently the KCS is happy to haul coal trains for uh, mostly the BNSF, but also the Union Pacific. So that train waited, and here is a, 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 a train of coal empties coming north. See the lights in the wrong spot, but at least it, taking a shot documents the, the train. All right, okay, so we're into farther on in the afternoon. So here's a new, a new train, uh, Kansas City Southern 5018. So that is sitting at the art office. So I, I go farther north to the uh, north side of the of fuel racks and find this Kansas, I'm sorry, Canadian Pacific train with uh, tank cars uh, in the fuel rack. Uh, there's a road that runs right next to this out of town. So I went and looked and found these pushers at the end. And, you know, how's that for a fuel facility? If they pull the pushers ahead to to the fuel rack, it'll block this road. And you think, well, close the road. But no, it's actually an important road. There's a lot of residents and a, a factory on the, uh, on the road, and that's the only entrance. This was the Canadian Pacific unit of all things. Strathcona's unit, which I have caught in Milwaukee, number 7030, is one of the pushers. All right. All right. So in a little while, another uh, a southbound came into the fuel rack. So now I've got the classic merger shot here, the CP on the left and the KCS on the right. This train on the left stayed for quite a while. The train on the right ended up being the through track for several hours. And the timetable shows both of these tracks as main tracks, you know, in, in yard limits. Here's a shot of the, the engines used on the Fort Smith local today, same engines as the ones that were used the prior day. And here's a sunset shot. You can see the train on the right that I showed before it's gone, and a fresh one has taken its place, but the train on the left is still sitting. All right, so that takes care of the full day. Usually when I rail fan, I don't stay any place in particular for very long. And I thought this might be a chance where I could stay around the place all day and see what comes. Okay, so the next morning after I share a breakfast with some locals doing some of the most positively inane conversation I've ever had to had to bear, went over and checked the fuel rack and found this unit, the saluting our heroes unit on the KCS. So felt very lucky to stumble into uh, one of their uh, tribute units. Interesting about this unit is that it's painted in English on this side, but in Spanish on this side. I guess it makes sense given that they're an international railroad, but I thought it was a nice touch. Okay, in the meantime, it's past the yard office, the southbound BNSF coal train is waiting for a crew. Okay, so now I go up on the mountain and the scanner, the scanner is quiet and it's just quiet. So there's a little place to park near the uh, town of Page. So I pull over and I uh, listen to music and fall asleep for a while. And finally I start to hear a, 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 a chatter and the uh, Fred. So I go look for it. And here comes a uh, northbound. You can see there's a vet the veterans unit is second. Here's a nice close up view of the Kansas City Southern's Veterans Tribute, number 4006. This is taken from the elevation of the road right next to the tracks. Makes it very convenient. 
Okay, so that's that uh, uh, northbound and this southbound met at Page Siding. So I just waited and then waited for that train that was in the rack first thing in the morning to come along. And here it is heading to the to the geographic east southbound. This was the concept the had the Kansas City Southern's hazmat training tank car. And this picture just doesn't quite do justice as to how vivid and bright this car stood out in contest with all the gray and brown around it. This is what uh, I'm told is the money shot, one of the few places you can get on this stretch of track where there's a little curve, you can get the S curve. I've seen this shot many times done by other people, so I had to get my own. All right, so you can see this train is continuing forward. Now here it is at Acorn at the end of the, uh, it's going up the hill and down the hill and here it's level territory. By here, they're pretty much hauling at about uh, maybe 40, 45 miles per hour. The timetable limits speed on the stretch of track from to 40 miles per hour. When you get a ways further south, the timetable speed goes up to 50. So this is at about 1.30 or two o'clock in the afternoon on the third day. And in order to be home at the end of the fifth day, or fourth day, I've got to head out. So I'll just show you a couple of things I saw on the way, way home. There's a branch line that runs to Waldron, which is the due north of where I, that last shot. Found this one sitting there, the Wamex division, Wamex line. So there's a couple of Wamex power. It's not a bad looking engine actually. I stopped at Fort Smith and found a steam engine at a museum there. I don't know if this ever ran on them. In recent times, I don't know if it's running, I don't know. There's a short line base in Fort Smith. This is one of their two engines. This is the other. Not a pretty shot, but looks like it's pretty much intact. And then I spent that night in Springfield, Missouri going home and I stopped in St. Louis or I should East St. Louis to take a quick look around and found the Port Harbor Railroad. And they have a couple of units that are painted. This one is for saluting the veterans. This one is for honoring first responders. Okay, that's thank you for your attention. That's my show. Jerry Krug, everybody, uh, give uh, let's give Jerry a round a big round of applause. Thank you, Jerry. Any anybody have any questions or commentary for Mr. Krug? There, I kept it under time, Mike, just like I promised. <laughs> Wonderful. Good, so, good stuff, Jerry. Maybe you should put it, you send, out a, send out a map if uh, anyone else wants to go down and chase that area. Yeah, it's, it's a good, the driving is reasonable and it's on and there's a lot of different views and the hotel is reasonable and, you know, it's a, it was a good experience. Good deal. Good deal. You, did you, uh, did you have a chance to explore the, uh, the Fort Smith uh, Railroad Museum at all there while you were there? I didn't. I saw it and I was near it, but uh, you know, you travel a long ways, and you know, you should see everything while you're there. But I was kind of determined to stay on my schedule. So the NRHS had that steam engine. I moved on. Mm -hmm. The NRHS had its uh, conference there in September, so I was there, you know, a month before you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the folks at Fort Smith, uh, they uh, they rolled out the red carpet for us with uh, one or one or two of their streetcars. Um, nicely done. Okay. Very good, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, everybody, just a reminder, if you're not a member of the Wisconsin chapter NRHS, um, it's $21 online. Just uh, go to www.nrhswis.org and become a member instantly. Um, and we thank you for your support. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you are a member and you haven't renewed, um, same thing applies. So thank you.